So I wrote to the master, Master Pointer, and at that time he wasn't famous. He didn't have a group of people around him. And I saw this imposing figure with his extraordinary eyes, and I sat down on the floor and I wanted to express my independence. I said, I don't have any expectations. You know, I was being, trying to be a big shot. And he said, that's good. <laughs> and then he whispered. He said, you don't have to make any effort to be free. And the minute he made, said these words, you don't have to make any effort to be free, I had a vision. The vision was water flowing side to da down the side of a mountain. And I realized in that instant that my own true nature was like that water, ever freely flowing, ever unobstructed. But the minute I started making the effort to meditate, I got a headache, which had never happened before. And then I went, What's hap why am I getting a headache? And I realized I was being disobedient, because he told me to let go in so many words. And I wasn't doing it. I was still holding on to my ideas, my belief, my ideas about effort and right practice. I never had ambitions to become a teacher or a guru. I, that was never part of my plan. I never even thought about it. So I, I suddenly became, I, I became a, a powerful teacher over, no, literally it was like a switch, a light switch went on. So I had access to a level of wisdom and clarity, insight and depth about enlightenment that I didn't earn. It was suddenly there, there as a spontaneous gift. I went and traveled all over Europe, I went to Israel, and I had a group, and people started saying, I want to follow this man wherever he goes. So people started giving up their lives. I was putting a lot of pressure on people to do work on themselves, to face their egos. And some people found it very difficult and harsh. But I have to say, I was very transparent that I was very radical, that I was very intense, that I was, that I, was I said, we're going to go all the way, whatever it's going to take. And those of you who want to be with me, have to be willing to do whatever it's going to take, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I, and I was quite wild when I was younger. The whole thing kept growing. So we had an enormous center, enormous ashram in, in Massachusetts, and we had centers in London and Paris, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Rishikesh, and New York and Boston, and, and groups everywhere. I had a big vision that everybody would develop to such a degree that together we would catalyze this huge breakthrough in consciousness. And it happened. Then I started saying, if you don't want to do the work, you should leave. So it got very heavy. And some people got hurt. Some people, if you put, a lot too much, if you did, if you put too much pressure on a person's ego, they're either going to have a breakthrough or a breakdown. Some people had breakthroughs, other people had, break, had breakdowns. And at that time, as you can see, I'm a very passionate person. I told my students, I don't care about you. This is terrible what I'm going to say, but I felt I don't care about you personally. I care about what you can make possible if you give yourself to this. And this beautiful worldwide community of like four or 500 people, in terms of everybody included, started imploding. Because then a lot of people said, oh, Andrew's not perfect. And Andrew's not leaving his own teachings perfect. He's making a mistake. He's not doing what he told us to do. I'm leaving. I had a breakdown. I literally had a nervous br breakdown. So this has been very humbling. And yet I'm still an idealist. I still as, I'm still as idealistic as I was. I'm still as on fire as I still want to burn up the world in the same way. And some people who know this say, oh, no, he still wants to do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> they say, may this guy disappear and never return again. Of course, of course, the fire that the Master lit in, lit in me is still alive and as powerful as it ever was, but I'm different.